Hey guys, this here with Sterling Crochet and Fabrics, and I want you to make this menstrual reusable pad with me. Um, this is something I have used and made for the last 15 years, um, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, so a lot of ladies or girls, as you know, all over the world, it has become very hard to afford reusable menstrual or disposable menstrual products, and a lot of families just simply can't afford it, even in places that are well off. You know, times have gotten hard, and a lot of ladies and girls cannot afford menstrual products in the budget, and when something like that happens, they end up either using menstrual products for way too long than necessary, which is very unhealthy. Um, this is a product I personally use. It's up to you what you use, but this is something I've used for the last 15 years. So what I did, everything is pretty much... Um, what I handmade as far as the pattern, I just took a um, standard panty liner and I just put it in the middle of a piece of paper and went around it. The measurement is seven and a half by eight. And just to make sure, I did about three inches so that it does wrap around the undies and snaps. So this is just basically what I made. You can buy these, you can find these online, you can do whatever pattern you want, totally up to you. And then I just copied the panty liner there. Okay, so um, there is the core. This material is um, Hosor, it's made in the USA. They are made um, for menstrual. Um, products and also for diapers so they're made for dads um, it is not a very cheap product but i will show you other ways that you can utilize either uh, reusable items used items that you can find anywhere in the world so whether it's in your marketplace or in your regular shops or whatever you'll be able to find the um, products to make these i'll make a separate video okay so i cut out actually two of this layer hosor so this is going to be about a medium absorbency and then the the part that actually will be the top layer that will be facing um, the woman's body is flannel. It's what I'm using for this. So this is the flannel. And then the next layer that I will be using, which will be the bottom of the pad, this is what faces the undies, this will be um, fleece. Okay, that's what I'm using. You can research and use whatever other materials, but this is what I'm using. So this is a fleece layer, and I'll put that as the second part. So I put the flannel on top, the fleece um, right side facing right side. And then I put the Zord, I mean the PUL, which is the plastic-like material. It does have a little stretch to it, and that is what helps with the uh, liquid resistance. So that goes on the bottom. So this is the layers that I follow to make sure everything goes great. So yeah, let's get started, okay? So set that here. So what I'm going to do, and one little step I didn't tell you, when I do my pattern for these, I do go over it about a quarter of an inch, um, and you will see why I do that in a moment. I'll explain it, but over all of the patterns, the three patterns I have here, the three layers, I go over it about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so this is what I do first. I go ahead and place the absorbent layer. If it was, um, it's just, it's two layers. So I put that as close to the middle of this part on the wrong side of the top layer of fabric, the flannel. Go ahead and pin that the best I can here. And you just want to make sure you try to get it as, I'm so scared of pins sometimes, guys. I do have the clip, but this part works a little bit better with pinning. So let me actually do it a little bit more in the middle because I want to go all the way around it. Okay, so you go ahead and pin it like so, okay? And what you'll do is sew all the way around it. All right. Let's get to this machine and pray it doesn't act up. Okay. You want to always backstitch everything, guys. Make sure you backstitch, backstitch, backstitch. Okay. And you can just make sure you take your time. No rush until you've done it a few times. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It does not have to be perfect. Backstitch again. Showing my handy scissors that I have a trillion of, but I can never quite find them when I need it. Okay, so let me go ahead and trim all of my threads right now. And I did do this one in the black because I wanted you guys to see the stitch, but you can do whatever you like. So this is how the pad looks in the front of it. So we've attached that. Typically, you want to do this in a lighter color, color or have a bobbin of a lighter color. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and lay this right on top of this layer. So we're back to the flannel, the fleece, and then the PUL, which is the, um, the um, what is it called? The leak proof, okay? So we just want to make sure everything is together. All layers are there. Take a little time to make sure everything is um, good in that aspect because when you sew, you want to make sure you catch all layers. So go ahead and pin it here, and we are going to pin it there, okay? And just to mark for you guys um, the area, you want to leave a space open. You can choose whatever side you want to do that on. You just want to make sure it's about two inches. I typically will do it on the top here, but you can do it on the side where the straight line is, you know, whatever works for you. Okay, so there's no rules about that. So let's get started, okay? And then you 
back stitch again. And I'm sorry, you want to sew on what I have here as the sew line, okay? So you want to do that. And take your time, especially when you're doing the corners and things, just to make sure everything is good. Probably should have added a pinch to the top, but... Make sure nothing shifted and moved around. You want to make sure everything is caught. Okay, come down here and you want to again double check, make sure all layers are aligned. You can definitely pin this more. approach the line that we're leaving open for the turn out of the item here so this is how everything looked like so far we want to go ahead and remove the pins okay and i use these pinky shears to cut around so on the first part of the So doing all my little thread trimming right away and yeah i'm gonna try to clean up as i go okay all right so once we are done with that um we are going to go ahead and add in some snaps okay so i think i can push this far away now and focus on these snaps all right so here we have perfectly good pack and now we're going to add the snaps i'll be adding the bright color snaps so you guys can see with these snaps, they have two pointy parts, which look like that, look like little temp packs or whatever. You need to pull out two of those. And then the other parts they have, they have a female and a male part. So this would be the, the female part. It has a little canal in the middle. And then the male part would have this little circle that's pushed up a little bit, okay? So you put that aside, okay? So now I am going to grab my tool, which is what you need to attach the um, snaps to it, okay? And then you also need a tool something sharp to poke it through it usually all comes with the snaps um, package you can purchase off amazon so you want to go ahead take the sides put it together like so okay the best you can and then right before the stitch line you'll see or right after the stitch line you want to go ahead and poke through all the layers all at once because you want the snaps to end up um you know um within the same area on each side so you just want to push that through kind of circle it around because you want to make the hole to be visible okay all right, so for the first um, part, you'll take the uh, little thumbtack part and you'll push it through all the way through like that, okay? And then you'll take either the female or male part, it doesn't matter which one you do first, and you'll push it through. This is the female, so you want that part facing upwards like that. And then with the tool that looks like that, you want the thumbtack top going in this bottom. So you want to slide that under, and it'll just slide in. And then you want the second part, like the female part there facing upwards, once it's in lines, then you just want to squeeze as hard as you can, okay? So just squeeze that down. I do a few pumps, but I really squeeze it down to make that a hair so that's what we have it's in there okay and then for the next part so we have the female part on this side so you want to put the little tongue tack part on this side now the dark side okay so you want to find that it's a little harder on the darker side of the fabric so once you find it you want to make sure it pushes all through for that pointy part of the tongue tack to come out there we go okay so there's that that comes out and then this is the male part you want to put it on top here so you just want to squeeze and make sure all of that pointy tongue tack part is out and then you're doing the same thing. You're taking the top of the thumbtack and making sure it's in this bottom part. And once you feel it in there, you want to align it with the top there and just squeeze it as hard as possible, okay? Squeeze it down. Uh, okay? Okay. And that is on there, okay? And this is how your pack will snap together, okay? So let me just go ahead and pull this one because I have a lot of length on that one. So this is how it goes. Of course, you would just snap it together like that. And then you have a perfectly good pad right there. Let me know what you guys think about it, please do. And let me know. I will be making a secondary video on how to make the pads out of just reusable um, items that you can find either in your shops or marketplaces. Um, let me know what you think. And I will talk to you later.